I'm going to assume you have calculated your gauge and the number of foot rows you need to crank. If you need assistance with that, it's the exact same method as our simple sock pattern. So you could use the simple sock crank along videos, numbers two and three. I'm going to crank 66 rows for the foot. Now you might also want to make note of how many cuff and leg and um, pre-heel rows you're going to crank. So for me, for the cuff, I usually like to do 20. So I'm going to put 20 rows. And then my pre-heel, that is this section where we're going to take out the river needles so that they're not rubbing. You don't have a rib section rubbing at the back of your, your heel inside of your shoe. So we'll do a section of plain stockinette. So this is 20 rows here, and that's the amount that I usually like. And then for my leg, I am going to crank 70 rows. So sometimes I've been known to forget that in between the two different socks. So I've gotten into a habit of just marking that at the bottom of my worksheet. Before we cast on, we need to remove all of the needles that are lined up with the river dial slots. So we'll have one cylinder needle, one empty slot, one cylinder, one empty slot, all the way around. Then we're going to cast on with waist yarn. So this time, instead of putting your split rings every other needle, you'll have one on every needle. And now you're going to crank several rows until you have enough waist yarn that the split rings are well below where the ribber stop and the ribber fin connect. This seems like a good number of rows. So now I'm going to crank until the main mark is at the break in the yarn feeder. At this point, if you wanted, you could crank one row of very thin lace weight or uh, tatting weight thread. And that just helps make that cast on edge a little bit tighter for that Juana's cast on so that first cuff isn't quite as lacy. I'm not going to do that here just to save us a step on our demo, but you could put one row here in between the waist yarn and your project yarn. So I'm going to switch here over to my project yarn. And we are going to be using the heel spring. So thread your yarn under the clip. First, pull that waist yarn through. And if your needle immediately after the main mark is one that is missing, then I would use the one right before the main mark as your main mark needle for right now, really until we start the heel. And then I'm going to clip both ends of the yarn together in a weighted clip. So I have the waist yarn and the new project yarn hugging that needle that's going to be my main mark for now. I'm going to engage my heel spring. Now we are turning on the row counter resetting it to zero and we're going to crank just a few stitches to make sure that our project yarn is catching and it is which is good and then <clears throat> i would go ahead and attach your ribber now so you can try to my my ribber stop is right here so that's where i'm lining up my fin again you want to go straight down as much as possible but it's possible to get jammed in those you know, this is kind of loose, so it can get stuck on the way down. So you kind of have to press it into, into place. And then use your bolts to attach the frame to the camshell. And from here, you're going to crank until the main mark is at four o'clock. Right about here. So now you want to, again, push your river stopper your rubber dial back just the tiniest bit to make sure it's well seated. So now I'm going to start adding rubber needles. So just lay the needle in, make sure it's the latch is open, and then you lift up slightly on the rubber and reach in with the loom tool to get your project yarn and just lay it on top of 
the needle. Crank forward only a tiny bit so that you can do the next one. If, if you go too far and these start falling under here, you won't be able to add a river needle. So you're going to continue like that, adding the river needles all the way around. When your first river needles get to the area where they're ready to knit, I like to just take a quick peek at them and make sure everything is continuing to work as it should. One tip as I'm first casting on is I keep kind of just jiggling my river dial a little to make sure that my river needles are lined up exactly between the other two needles and over the empty slots. I find that if I'm very careful about that and don't let them kind of swing one way or the other when I'm first starting, they're more likely to stay centered throughout my project. I've been watching as I went along. I can see they're all knitting well. Very important to check each stitch as it comes back around on this next row to make sure that they have all knit well. None of the stitches have dropped. After the row counter turns to three and you see the main mark again, crank it till it's all the way at the break in the yarn feeder. At this point, you can choose to disengage the heel spring if you want. The reason we keep that on is so that the top of that cast on edge doesn't get too frilly and having the heel spring engage for the first couple of rows really helps with that. If you like the top of your sock to be a little tighter, then you can go ahead and keep the heel spring engaged for the entire cuff. Although I am going to go ahead and take it off now that I finished my first few rows. Now you're going to crank the number of rows that you want for that cuff. We usually do for the, for the very top cuff of one by one rib, we usually do 20 rows. It's important to crank very slowly. Really, I crank at about this speed the entire time and I watch every stitch as it comes right along here to make sure that it hasn't dropped. If it has, I stop to repair it right away because otherwise I know there will be more problems later. And in fact, usually if I drop a stitch in this first section that I can't repair without having to take off the river, I just start over. I'll, I'll just take the whole project off and I just recast on and do it again. Visit us at deanandbean.com and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.